and this is the Washington Times front page. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. The House has delivered a bipartisan rebuke to the District of Columbia over its new law allowing non-citizens to cast ballots in local elections. Stephen Dynan reports the bill was approved on a 262 to 143 vote. D.C.'s policy is one of the most ambitious in the country. It allows residents to register and cast ballots for mayor, council, school, and advisory commission elections. Non-citizen voting is illegal in federal elections, but some cities are experimenting with it for local contests. Activist lawsuits citing the First Amendment are squeezing schools nationwide as administrators seek to maintain safety and decorum on their campuses after protests this spring. Alex Sawyer reports public and private universities have been hit with lawsuits over campus responses to demonstrations since Hamas's attack on southern Israel and the Jewish state's retaliation against them in the Gaza Strip. Locally, University of Virginia officials are facing a lawsuit filed last week by a Jewish student who alleged harassment and discrimination against Jews because of their faith. Current and former U.S. intelligence officials say the intelligence community lacks the business knowledge needed to provide Americans with economic security from foreign theft and competition. Ryan Lovelace reports the officials see gaps in their ability to detect technological surprises and threats to national security emerging in the private sector, where adversaries such as China look to undermine and steal U.S. innovation. Efforts to remedy the problems include changes to the spy agency structure and new tools created in the private sector that can assist the government in analyzing America's adversaries. An incident earlier this month in which two Jordanian migrants were caught trying to enter the Marine Corps base in Quantico, Virginia, has members of Congress demanding answers. In the May 3rd incident, Stephen Dynan reports security forces encountered a box truck approaching the base. The two men in the truck said they were trying to make an Amazon-related delivery. Security pointed them to a quarantine area while their story was investigated, but base officials say the men defied the instructions. They were arrested and turned over to U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, which has confirmed the men were Jordanians and said they are now facing deportation. Recent polls show former President Trump is on track to win 20% or more of the black vote in November and specifically in battleground states. Susan Fericcio reports an average of recent polls shows Trump leading in the seven swing states that will likely determine who controls the White House next year. Trump's advantage among voters averages from as slim as a tenth of a point in Wisconsin to nearly five points in Arizona, North Carolina, and Nevada, according to Real Clear Politics. And finally, foreign affairs reporter Andrew Salmon recaps the ASON Plenum Security Conference in South Korea this week. Adversarial states and actors such as the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda are deploying assets that operate at low risk and low cost across real and virtual battlefields. The U.S. and its allies have so far been unable to respond effectively to these assets. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app and find us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on social media at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.